Hi everybody, my name is Jessica and this is my channel Plant Hooker. Now today I'm going to talk about my weeping fig or Benjaminophycus. This is the first plant I'm going to be doing mostly because this is the plant I have the most knowledge on because this is my oldest plant. I've had this plant now, it'll be 20 years come February, so in about 19 and a half years that I've had this guy. And when I first got him, he was as small as this sapling is here on the side. And he got to be this big to where he's just a little bit taller than me now. I've propagated this guy many times and I've traded him for like, like his babies for more plants. Very easy to propagate. You just take one of the cuttings, cut just below like a branch here or whatnot, so then that's where the roots are going to form. Put it in water for 45 days. Roots are good enough then to be put in a pot. Start with small pots though. Don't too big and the roots will rot. I, 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 I learned that the hard way. Also, she can be a bit of a drama queen, or he, because I keep going back for between he and her with this plant. Because anytime I move this guy, immediately starts dropping leaves. So as I said, drama queen. Weeping figs, or most ficuses, are toxic to cats, dogs, and people too. Because these guys here, if you have an allergy to latex, you will need to wear gloves when you're pruning and cleaning him. Because I've learned that the hard way as well. Because I, I have a latex allergy. So, and with my, one of my cats unfortunately is a little bit on the suicidal side. In order for her to stop eating this guy, I have to spray him down with a mixture of vinegar water every five days. Some people do miss these. Uh, Every, every one of them is different. Like I've heard of people having theirs needing very high humidity. Mine has done pretty good sitting next to a wood stove, which can get very dry. So uh, mind you, he's not by a wood stove anymore now. Prefers south facing, west facing windows. He's not happy in east or north because when he's like really thrown a fit. These are native to Asia and Australia, so it would probably explain why some of them do better in different humidities, because if they're the ones that are originally from Australia, which don't have much humidity because it's more of a desert climate, and the ones that are from Asia tend to be more in a humid climate. In the wild, these things can get up to 100 feet tall. The biggest one I've seen in captivity myself was only 20. And this guy is a little bit above five. Um, fertilizer, they do great with all purpose fertilizer or even the ones that's just for green plants. Uh, they can flower and make fruit. Mind you, I think it's mostly the ones that are in the wild that do that because mine has never flowered or fruited. Some people can make these into bonsais and for those who have them in their houses and they start getting too big, uh, they do tend to do that to keep and in, to ensure that they can keep them in their house because, well, not everybody has 20 foot roofs. Um, that's not really... They can handle being outside, but only from June to September, from what I've heard and done my research on. I don't like to put him outside unless it's 20 degrees or more. They say that they can handle 16, but anytime I've tried putting him outside in 16, throws a fit. If it's 20, perfectly fine. He's happy, very happy. Um, so about 16 to 27 degrees is what they like. Him, during the winter time, I'll water him, but I'll give him about a liter a month. During the summer, a liter every two weeks. And he seems to be quite happy with that. As far as potting soil goes, all-purpose potting soil works great. Uh, I've also heard people using cobra coir, 
Uh, I always put extra perlite in mine because I find regular potting soil doesn't have enough. So I'll put the extra drainage in it just so then it's happy and she seems to do great. Smaller plants will need to be watered more often than larger plants. He is currently in a 15 inch pot. So that's why he only needs to be watered about once a month during the winter and every two weeks during the summer when the weather is warmer. Other than that, uh, when it comes to pest, I haven't had any trouble with this guy with pests at all. The only thing I've had trouble with was soil mites. And at the time that that happened, I was living with a smoker. So I was taking the ashes from their cigarettes and just putting it in the dirt. And that got rid of the soil mites. Would I do that now, knowing better that there are safer ways of getting rid of soil mites? No, I would not do that again. Uh, I do spray him every now and then with uh, an insecticide that's a mixture of insecticidal soap, uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, neem oil, and water because the plants that are all around this guy seem to always get thrisp, but not him. So he's he's pretty much, when he's not throwing a fit, he's my powerhouse. So I have nothing to say bad about this guy other than when he throws a fit, I'll lose leaves. So perfect plant as far as I'm concerned for beginner plant people because as I said, this even though this is my oldest plant, it is not my first plant. It would have to probably be maybe my 10th plant before I finally got things right 20 years ago and had my collection going. Um, I think that's it for all the knowledge that I have on this guy. If you have any more questions, I'll shoot me a message and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Otherwise, this is my... <laughs> He's taller than me. This is my Weeping Fig or Benjamin Ficus. Thank you for watching and subscribe.